Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Calls for a so-called people's vote on the final Brexit deal are growing louder. And leading that charge is Open Britain champion Lord Adonis, who joins me in the studio. Lovely to see you again. Good morning. Um, the yin and yang of British politics, perhaps. Bill Cash and yourself. What did you make of what you heard from him there? Well, what's interesting about what Bill Cash said is that uh, he's totally unreconcilably opposed to what Theresa May has set out on Friday from Chequers. So, already, the Chequers agreement is breaking down, cos what you're finding is... A good half, maybe two-thirds, of the Conservative Party is strongly opposed, including at least a third of the Cabinet. We know what Boris Johnson described it as in the papers today. So they're already starting up before any negotiations have taken place with Brussels at all. They're starting out with a charge of this being a sellout because it will still involve some measure of agreement with the European Union over trading goods, some role for the European Court of Justice and so on. Now, people like me, we look at this in horror and say, look, what we need is the national economic interest people's jobs, livelihoods, incomes are at stake. What the government has agreed on Friday is that 80% of our trade with Europe, 80%, which is in services, all our financial services, our business services, our media, all of the, these huge services we've got, they're not going to be covered at all. We've already agreed uh, in advance mm -hmm. that we're not going to have a deal on those, only on goods, because the Prime Minister doesn't actually want to have customs controls because of the issue to do with Ireland. So what you've now got is two irreconcilable positions. You've got a large proportion of people, I now think it's a majority, who look at this in increasing horror. They asked the question two years ago, did you vote to be poorer? And that's why the demand for the people's vote is growing, but she's also losing control of her party on the other side. But, but, but just on that, and you, you didn't really need to, to, to work too hard to read between the lines with Bill Cash, as, as you said there, but doesn't he have a point that actually people who voted for Brexit, and they were in the majority, did not vote for a situation where we did not have sole control of our borders, where we didn't have sole control of our laws, where we didn't have sole control of our trade. Well, the truth is, no-one knew what they were voting for two years ago, cos there was no Leave proposition. The only question on the ballot paper was, do you wish to leave the European Union or to remain? Leaving has 101 different variants to it. You know, there's Norway, which isn't in the European Union, but is incredibly close in terms of the whole way its economy is integrated. But then you also have, of course, a, a situation where you could have no relationship with the European Union uh, uh, altogether, and that's what Bill Cash wants. Now, the truth is, no-one knew. So the right thing to do is now for the Prime Minister, on the basis of checkers, to see what she can negotiate with, uh, with our European partners, and then the British people should have a look at that, they should ask the question, is this going to make you poorer? Is it going to sacrifice our influence in the world? Are we going to be worse off, with the alternative being staying in? And the longer this farce goes on, because we've now had two years of it, I think the clearer it's becoming to the British people that the right course is not to sacrifice our jobs, our international influence. We live in a dangerous world at the oh, moment. Okay, we shouldn't okay, okay, be separating but, but, ourselves from Europe, but to stay in through a democratic process with a people's But vote. it seems to be the get-out-of-jail-free card used by yourself and others who do not like the result of the referendum, who would wish to see that result overturned, that, you know, the, but the ballot paper didn't tell us what end situation we'd end up in. Actually, what the ballot did was give the Prime Minister the authority to secure the exit from the European Union that she thought best. And we've got it now. Why aren't people, you supporting People didn't even know that Theresa May was going to be Prime Minister with the referendum two years ago. Remember, it was David Cameron. Remember, he told us well, he wasn't we vote in governments, don't we? We vote, don't so, vote in yeah, Prime Minister. And, and she's had an election since then, which she lost. You know, she hasn't got a majority in the House of Commons. I've sat through nearly 200 hours of debates in the House of Lords now on the EU withdrawal bill, and each day the government position changes. So the right thing to do, because we are a democracy, is we've let this thing run, there was a narrow referendum result two years ago. She does clearly have the authority to negotiate on our behalf, but when she has negotiated and we've got the treaty, the right democratic thing is for Parliament, when they look at it, and Parliament could itself reject it, but I think the right thing is for Parliament to refer it to the people. And that's not just my view. The, the opinion polls now show a big majority for a referendum, and it's you, obviously you, you the know democratic as, You thing. know as well as I do that there will have been people watching this back at home who will have howled at the screen when you use the words, you know, we live in a democracy. Of course we live in a democracy. We had an election last year which led to a big swing against the Conservatives. We had a narrow referendum two years ago. Uh, in a few weeks' time, there will have been a longer interval between now and the last referendum than between the last two general elections. Because remember, we had general elections in 2017 and 2015. 
regular consultation with the people is what democracy is all about, particularly on massive issues which are, are changing over time. And the critical thing about Brexit, you know, I don't wish the Prime Minister any ill will at all. It's absolutely right she's seeking to negotiate on our behalf. But she does not have the unilateral power, because we're not in a dictatorship, to agree to departure terms with Brussels without consulting Parliament. And I think the right thing to do is for Parliament then to refer it to the people who all opinion polls show now are overwhelmingly support having their say before we crash out of the European Union and people become poorer. I mean, but don't you think your party should actually just fess up, be honest about what, exactly what their position is when it comes to all of this? I mean, you know, speaking to Tony Lloyd a couple of minutes, a few minutes ago, I mean, I'm no clearer as to whether or not a people's vote, the prospect of a people's vote, has been ruled out or not. I mean, would you leave the Labour Party if, they, if the leadership made it absolutely crystal clear that there would not be a people's vote I, uh, in, under a Labour government? I, I'm not leaving the Labour Party. And let's be clear, the pro-Europeans are the overwhelming majority in the Labour Party. The people who want a people's vote are in the overwhelming majority, both in the parliamentary Labour Party amongst Labour MPs, but also within the membership at large. What the party membership wants is Jeremy Corbyn, for whom they have great respect. They want him to, to follow the right course for the country and respond to the great majority in the party. And they happen to be the same thing which is don't trash working people of Britain by agreeing to a deal which is going to make them all poorer. Let's have a people's vote. Let's reject all this and then we can move on to the big agenda which is so important for the country, rebuilding the NHS, dealing with the housing crisis, better education, all of these things which can't be done while we're obsessing night and day with Brexit. England football result. With Brexit. No, no, no. <laughs> well, we've got a bit of light relief, thank goodness, at the moment. We're cap capable of talking something, and I, you know, your waistcoat speaks volumes. That's fantastic. The it, it is the last uh, time it gets mentioned on this show if I have anything to do with it. Uh, Andrew Donis, lovely to see you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for joining us.